let us worship God and bow low before the God who made us. He is the Lord our God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and the Lord be with you. Welcome to this Sunday, where we have the beautiful story from the Gospel of Christ healing, or perhaps more clearly, uh, raising up um, the Apostle Simon Peter's mother-in-law from fever. It's a beautiful story to help illustrate what it means to be lifted up for all of us, for the whole church. And we'll explore a bit more of that as we journey through um, this morning. First, let's uh, open up our hearts and minds to take away those things which perhaps prevent us from being lifted up by Christ's grace in order to receive that same gift afresh. Let us pray. The Lord looks on his servants with mercy, not with blame. In our sight we do not stand. In God's sight we do not fall. Both these insights have a ring of truth, but the greater belongs to the work of God. Lord God, you have made us for yourself and long for our love. Forgive our reluctance to respond to you. Lord, have mercy. Lord Christ, you bring us healing and forgiveness. Forgive our unwillingness to accept your gifts. Christ, have mercy. Lord Spirit, you come to us with new life. Forgive our desire to cling on to old ways. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to the joy of the healing of heaven. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. 
No, man. Let's pray. Keep your family safe, O oh Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. And so the Gospel for this weekend is uh, taken from the account by St Mark. On leaving the synagogue, Jesus went with James and John straight to the house of Simon and Andrew. Now Simon's mother-in-law had gone to bed with fever. And they took, told him about her straight away. He went to her, took her by the hand and helped her up. And the fever left her and she began to wait on them. That evening, after sunset, they brought to him all who were sick and those who were possessed by devils. The whole town came crowding round the door. And he cured many who were suffering from diseases of one kind or another. He also cast out many devils, but he would not allow them to speak, because they knew who he was. In the morning, long before dawn, he got up and left the house, and went off to a lonely place and prayed there. Simon and his companions set out in search of him. And when they found him, they said, everybody is looking for you. He answered, let us go elsewhere to the neighbouring country towns so that I can preach there too, because that is why I came. And he went all through Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out devils. This is the Gospel of the Lord. And praise to you, O Christ. If I was to ask you a question, what sort of a person do you think you could be if you were to ever become fully yourself? What would you do personally with that question in your own life? What sort of a person do you think you could be if you were ever to become fully yourself. But I'm sure the imagination can start to um, be triggered into all sorts of directions. Uh, and of course, what it means to be Christian is to share in that ultimate hope of what humanity is called to be. And the church tries to reflect and to help each other grow in the point and purpose of what it means to be alive. The last Archbishop of Canterbury, uh, Rome Williams, recently said that in his opinion, we probably only use between five and 10% of our human capacity. He generally felt that 90% of what it means to be human forever remains untapped. What humanity could be remains uh, hidden, remains unused. And in the gospel, we hear about the healing of the Apostle Simon Peter's mother-in-law. And you can see in this painting that what we're about to experience isn't just as if it were just uh, the healing of the Apostle Peter's mother-in-law. It's about the raising up, the bringing forth into the world of the fullness of humanity. That fullness which Ron Williams and others uh, believe uh, is rarely, if ever, brought anywhere near the fullness of what it could be. The crucial feature to look at in this painting is the raising up. It's not just, and I say the word just in a very highly qualified sense, not just a fix uh, and a shift, but the raising up of the whole person. It's what we call somebody being bring brought forth into their full stature, lifted up, being made whole. And the whole of the Christian life is about this constancy of being raised up into the fullness of what it means to be human. 
that fullness is ultimately found in Christ himself. Christian vocation is allowing this vocation to happen with us, allowing Christ himself to lift us into the fullness of who we are all called to be. We'll recall in today's Gospel that alongside the account of raising of Simon Peter's mother-in-law, he goes off to pray alone and it's set very much within that context of prayer. And this second painting reminds us that all prayer, all prayer, especially the Eucharist, but all prayer is ultimately Christ's own prayer. Liturgy reminds us that worship is something which ultimately Christ himself offers. We share in his life. He lifts us. He lifts our needs and the needs of the world to the Father. So prayer is how we allow Christ to become more fully ourselves. And as we journey through the forthcoming season of Lent, we'll keep on encouraging one another in traditional and in new ways, or ways with simply a fresh perspective of how we are called to lift each other and be allowed ourselves to be lifted by Christ's hand reaching out, as it did to the Apostle Simon Peter's mother-in-law, but reaching out once again to us, to lift us up to the fullness of life which we find solely and purely and wholly in himself. Amen. So mindful of that fullness of life for which Christ reaches out to lift us up to share, we use the words from this particular form of the affirmation of Christian faith. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And so in this time of intercession, when we share in Christ's life, lifting our prayers as he does to his Father in heaven, we pray for the needs of the church in this time of challenging and yet renewed ministry, that we may allow ourselves to be opened in such a way that Christ lifts us up into the fullness of his life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the needs of this troubled world. A world which is beautiful and rich in so many ways, yet constantly shot through with sickness, with anxiety, with fear. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for the people of our own neighbourhood, especially all those who live and work here in Nelson Little Marsden. Remembering Julie Wood and all the staff and children at St Paul's Primary School. We pray for all those people who live and work in our regions, hospitals and hospices, nursing and care homes. All those exercising a ministry on the front line of COVID care. We pray for our region's funeral services and all those who seek to bring comfort and consolation to those who are bereaved at this time. That we together with them, may allow ourselves, in all fear, sorrow or anxiety, to be lifted up into the fullness of resurrection life, which Christ continually calls us and his whole church to experience. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And so as we journey through the days of this coming week, we remember the beauty of the gift of the resurrection. 
which shows ourselves and the whole of creation being made new. Ever aided by the prayers of Mary, the first to experience the fullness of Christ's life, may we so follow him also in ways which are a continued pilgrimage towards that fullness of life, the kingdom of heaven on earth. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so let's continue now by uh, singing um, the next hymn. Lord our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life, lifting us up into the life of Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Christ Jesus, for our salvation. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you, the saints and angels, praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless your loving Father, through Christ our Lord, and as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son, Jesus Christ. The night before he suffered and died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread he praised you. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. And handing the cup to his disciples, he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for many so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and everything will be lifted up into the fullness of your kingdom. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with Mary, and Bede, and Paul, and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. As we say together, through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and for ever. Amen. So rejoicing together in that glimpse and share we have of being lifted up in Christ's body, the church, into the fullness of his life, we pray together as one family. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and for ever. Amen. And we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. And this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Let them thank the Lord for his mercy, his wonders for the children of men. For he satisfies the thirsty soul, and the hungry he fills with good things. Let us pray. O oh God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live, that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and all those that you love and pray for today and forevermore. Amen. And go in the peace of Christ to love and serve all people.